Welcome to Man Up on Iowa Catholic Radio, a show dedicated to helping men grow in their relationship with Jesus Christ. We are broadcasting on 1150 AM, 88.5 FM, and 94.5 FM. Heard around the globe, streaming online at iowacatholicradio.com and on the TuneIn Radio app. I am Joe Stopulis, along with my good friend, Father Zach Kautsky. And today we are excited to be joined by another good friend of ours and theologian, Bo Bonner. And the, to- the topic for today's show is Read Like a Man. Bo is the uh, director of campus ministry and the assistant professor at Mercy College of Health Sciences here in Des Moines. Prior to that, he has taught at Newman, Wichita State, Tulsa, and Oklahoma State universities as well. He converted to Catholicism in the midst of Protestant seminary at Duke Divinity University, coming into the church at Easter in 2006. He found his way back to the church through reading. And he's going to join us today in five minutes to talk about the importance of reading in our lives as men. Father Zach, would you please open us in a word of prayer? Absolutely. Good to see you, Joe. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Heavenly Father, source of all blessing and grace, you brought us to this moment in our lives. We ask that we would use this day to your greater glory and honor. Send us your Holy Spirit to be the guest of our soul, that we may move and breathe and have our being in you. And we ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy, Holy Spirit. Spirit. Amen. Father, one of the things I think about when it comes to reading is that from about first grade and kindergarten, actually my kids are, you know, one and two, and they're reading all the time, Novels. every day. Yeah, all the time. Well, they're reading books, but it's constantly reading books all night, every day. They love it. Up and through college, where we obviously have to read pretty significantly to get through college, and then... I feel like for so many people, the day they graduate college and get that diploma, they turn the faucet off and they just say, I'm I'm done with reading. And for good reason, they want to take a break, and I get that. The problem is most of them, I feel like studies would show that I've seen, don't pick it back up. They don't pick reading back up. Why is it so important to get back into a habit of reading? Well, and I wonder about that that issue of people not reading after college. I wonder if part of it is that they are reading so much for class that – they no longer read for pleasure, yeah. and so there's those negative feelings associated. I mean, with I, I love reading my accounting books. Yeah, really, great. really enjoy those great, yeah, great yeah, stuff. I okay. loved uh, biology and chemistry. <laughs> no, I think uh, for me, at least personally, really, really reading helps my imagination, like to be formed in a healthy way. And so, you know, there's so much out there that can really form our our imagination in a twisted way or uh, a way that's not pleasing to God. And so, I think one thing is that just reading, you know, especially fiction. Lord of the Rings, et cetera, you know, can really help form our imagination in a good way yeah. uh, so we can be holy men. And for me also, I think it helps me just to, at the end of the day, helps me sleep better, actually, uh, to have, even if it's 10 minutes, even if it's five minutes of reading, just to kind of consolidate my thoughts and, and focus on something. Uh, so it really does help me to just relax at the end of the day and kind of focus my energy and help me to uh, go to sleep. And, and from a scientific standpoint, it allows the brain to work, right? When you're working the brain, that's a good thing, keeping it tight, keeping it sharp, and especially when you look at people throughout their lives, especially people getting into the, old, the later part of their lives, the ones who are reading, the ones who are doing things that are sparking energy and, and imagination, they tend to be brighter, they tend to be sharper throughout their lives. So reading is, is so important. Obviously, it's very important at the, at the young ages just to learn how to, to function in society, but I'm, I'm learning now that I'm 30, Reading is today as important, if not more important, than it was back then because I, I need it. I need to grow as a person. Right. I need to learn. And in order to do that, you've got to read. Um, and people can, can watch television shows, but at the end of the day, that's, you can learn a little bit from that. But the depth of knowledge in books, we're surrounded by, you walk into a library, you're surrounded by knowledge. Uh, and coming into a habit of reading uh, is so important. And, uh, and, again, I know in my life, and, Father, I know in your life, we see that importance, and hopefully today through our conversations with Bo, uh, we can help inspire the other men out there to also see the importance of reading and what it can be in your life. So we're going to head to a short break, and when we return, Bo Bonner will be with us. So stick around, and we will be right back. Thank you.
Thanks for listening to Man Up on Iowa Catholic Radio, broadcasting on 1150 AM, 88.5 FM, and 94.5 FM. Heard around the world, streaming online at iowacatholicradio.com and on smartphones everywhere via the TuneIn Radio app. I am Joe Stopulis, along with Father Zach Kautsky, and we're excited today to be joined in studio by our good friend, Bo Bonner. Bo is the Director of Campus Ministry and Assistant Professor at Mercy College of Health Sciences here in Des Moines. He has taught at Newman, Wichita State, Tulsa, and Oklahoma State universities as well. He converted to Catholicism in the midst of uh, studying to be a Protestant minister at uh, the seminary at Duke Divinity School, and he came into the church at Easter 2006. Bo was born on the feast of St. Blaise, the patron of throats, and he has not stopped talking ever since that's right there it is <laughs> probably <laughs> even beforehand to be honest welcome to the show yeah thanks guys i i heard you talking about this uh this this strange myth of college students actually reading their books that's a good point i was amazed i was like yeah. oh wow that's i'm glad to know that this happens sometimes we're just talking people. about ourselves well, we this, always read oh you were always yeah, good that students is, personal that is right. a false <laughs> false statement uh actually the accounting book i know i never picked up uh topic of the show today bo Read like a man. Read like a man. I'd like to start the conversation with you personally, help our, our audience to have a little bit better understanding of how why this is something you're so passionate about. You converted to the faith. Mm-hmm. What, and you, like so many of the, the theologians and leaders in the church today that came from a Protestant background, read themselves into the faith. Talk about the conversion experience and why reading was so important in it. Well, yeah, and I, one thing I have to say that – there's a part of my experience that's hard to relate to anyone because I was just always a nerd who loved reading. And so one of the hardest things to convince people is to love reading because I've just always thought it was great. So I admit that if you think it's a rough go, maybe I'm the wrong person to listen to. When it comes to the faith, though, I mean, I went to Duke and they had us read the Church Fathers, and it, it still took a spiritual conversion. And it took me about three years, but within half a semester, um, these great masters, not only just in what they said as far as information, but the way they put it, is such a compelling image uh, that it was it was impossible not to just be deeply bothered by what all of these great people said. And so, just the, you know, when you get Ignatius of Antioch or Irenaeus in your head and they just keep bothering you, uh, I think you're eventually going to convert. And you, you, like you said, you see people like Newman and stuff like that talk about this, that um, the fathers are just so chatty and you're asleep at night and they won't let you go to bed unless you like come to heal. And uh, you have people like Athanasius and Augustine and they're not taking no for an answer. And I know it might be silly to put it this way, but part of the, the whole idea I have about why people don't re- like reading books is because they do read them like VCR manuals. Like they're just these boring repository of, you know, blah, bullet point facts. Mm -hmm. What I want people to realize is, no, these are the living words of masters uh, that are yelling across the ages for you to listen to if you'll read it that way. And that starts to be the problem. You know, you talk about reading through school. You made this point, you know, like kindergarten through college. Unfortunately for a lot of people, kindergarten through college is a long line of having wonder and awe beat out of them. Yeah. yeah. And the idea is like we're going to it's almost like we're beat over the head with books and it's teaching us how to be good little, you know, 9 9 to 5, get in this cubicle, go here. Fill in this box, fill in this box, right. check the right answer. But you know what what's so sad is if you look at kids and why kids love books is because kids naturally are more are better philosophers than we are. They just look at the world they look at imaginary worlds in utter awe, and they're willing to submit to the mastery of the book. That's the sort of technical way I like to put it. And for for me coming into the faith, that's what happened is Athanasius and Augustine and Thomas Aquinas were just too worthy of masters not to follow. And you have to read the book, though, especially of the saints with this in mind. They're alive they're alive in heaven if they're saints, but even the dead pagan authors, and Dante gets this right, <laughs> the dead pagans still speak to us, and the, the, the grain of truth threaded throughout their speech is alive. It is not the past you are reading, it is now. And if you read that way, a whole different world opens up to you. We're joined today by Bo Bonner, who's the Director of Campus Ministry and Assistant Professor at Mercy College of Health and Sciences. And Bo, you mentioned... Uh, this idea of reading, especially when you were going through seminary and go, kind of going through that conversion experience, that 
you're hearing the words of the masters and they're hitting your brain and your heart. Um, can you talk a little bit more about that, how that kind of helped you uh, come into the Catholic Church, how that really kind of inspired you to want to join the church? Yes, yeah, yeah, and, and to me, this this what I think for men sometimes this is the big blocking point. The idea either is that, you know, masculinity in, in, uh, in a modern America is this idea of I get to choose whatever I want to do. And it's never awesome, right? It's always like, I choose the third chili dog or I'm going to play <laughs> until midnight on the video game. Like, it'd be different if it was all like, I choose to ride this horse bareback. But it's always it's always Taco Bell and fourth meal or so whatever. we need to. I choose to read this book till the, late at night. So that's right. Yeah. <laughs> but but so we had this idea that it's either like my choice or that somehow reading is this very getting in touch with your emotions sort of deal. And talking about men and emotions, I guess a whole other radio segment. We'll save that one for a different radio. Right. So yeah. Thank Joe's you. emotions. Thank you. Yeah. Thank yeah. You. Right. <laughs> we'll be crying. Yeah. On the radio. That's but, what we want. But but for when when you talk about what what's going on with books, I, I actually think about it. If you want like a practical metaphor. Some of the best people in our lives as men have been people that we were willing to submit a certain mastery to. So what do we have? Well, we have coaches, right? Coaches are people that largely are universally held among men as people to be emulated, people that we respect. And the idea is not that the coach was like, hey, do whatever you want, Bonner. I'm sure it will work out. It's like, Bo, you're fat. Run, right? <laughs> you need to run, and you need to work on shooting and rebounding, right? We, we will submit to these people that really – put put a, you know put us to task but only if we're willing to see that our masculinity is about being good apprentices to proper masters when it comes to conversion and reading and it, the role it plays in conversion that's what it seemed like to me i could either get up every day as a protestant and try to be my own pope and it was very tempting to act like you I, probably loved being your own pope. well that's right <laughs> right, right. You like pontificating right so. exactly <laughs> And so you get up every day, and the big temptation is just to invent Christianity daily. Mm -hmm. And what you come to realize is there's worthier masters than yourself. That's a huge lesson. I mean, think about all the people today that are not, they're not reading the great wisdom of the, the saints. And so this timeless wisdom is kind of slipping through their fingers. Instead, they're taking on the wisdom well, of the Kardashians and or and whatever a, pop a, culture icon. A society of relativism where you are making your own truth – Submitting to someone else is totally foreign. It's a totally foreign concept. So I love that you're hitting on that. Yeah. Well, I think another way to put it, like let's let's throw uh, our our fellows under the light. Sometimes Catholics will do this too. They'll go read the Fathers, but it's sort of like either as information bullets mm -hmm. or like uh, self affirmation. Yeah. Like, oh, you know, yeah. like I got all the check marks listed off. How often do we read? You know, like the sermons of John Chrysostom, which can just be like fire tongued yeah. in their sort of like nuclear bomb type declarations how often do we read that we're the sinners he's speaking to how often have we read saint augustine talk about the legitimate concern of hell and say i am the person that could end up there how many times have we read the confession and thought i like augustine have chose a stupid peach over something more worthy and so this ability, you talked about imagination, Father. To me, that's what's up for, for grabs here, is the moral imagination of generations. Do we look at the world and its future potentialities and the hopes and desires that it has as just this sort of like, you know, snowballing effect of material reasons that things just have to happen that way? Or do we have some sort of horizon that the saints and the great books provide for us to actually imagine the world better and differently. And that's what reading affords. So you're listening to Man Up on IO Catholic Radio, and today we're joined by Bo Bonner, and the topic is Read Like a Man. My wife loves reading, has loved it from the day she was born. I did not love reading. I read a few Goosebumps books in grade school, and then I took a hiatus. I took a hiatus until about 28. Oh. Uh, the classics, only the Arnold Stein classics. <laughs> Why is reading not nerdy? Why is reading not nerdy? Well, it's either that it's not nerdy or that it is, and it's completely great to be a nerd. I, my answer, it, it depends on how you want to put it. I guess what I'm trying to say when you say that it's not nerdy is that it's not... Those are your words, not mine. No, I know. Yeah, yeah. Okay. It's, not, it's not nerdy in the sort of utilitarian sense. What I mean by this is a lot of people act like what you do when you read is to have some sort of weird niche technical, you know, uh, like that you can be the pro at whatever it is. 
And I know that we usually think of nerdy stuff like, I don't know, you know, video games or uh, obscure yeah. references. But, to... but Pete, like, look, men nerd out about things like cars and sports all the time. Mm-hmm. We maybe act like it's uh, sort of okay uh, in a sort of masculine way to be, but th- those are nerdy pursuits. Like, if you're learning about cars, not because you're fascinated by them, because they are fascinating machines, but just so that you can, like, browbeat the next guy about, like, you don't know what that carburetor is? <laughs> Well, that's nerdy. I'm sorry. No. And it's strange. <laughs> so nerdy, like sort of like marshalling reading to like lord it over someone else is awful and turns reading off to everyone else. But reading, like I said, doesn't have to be nerdy. Reading can truly be something like an apprenticeship, being willing to submit to the book. I would throw in when I think of some of my heroes in my life. So Teddy Roosevelt, Winston Churchill. Abraham Lincoln, especially these recent popes, uh, Bishop Sheen, uh, Cardinal Dolan, these guys are ferocious. They they read constantly. They are some of the most well-read people of all time, and these are our heroes. These are the people that we put on pedestals. Why doesn't that inspire me to read a book? I don't know, but it should give us an example of these are people who who were absolute uh, giants, and they were reading constantly, constantly. So... We've talked a lot about reading of saints and things that the saints have written. Let's talk about poetry. I know you're, you're very uh, big into poetry. A huge advocate. Why is poetry <laughs> used to be a thing that warriors did, and why is it no longer? Right. We constantly uh, have the idea that poetry is like very sentimental and, like I said, emotions-based feelings. You look at ancient cultures, and people who wrote poetry were almost always the military class. So part and parcel of being a knight in a lot of the European countries in the Middle Ages was, yes, being awesome at war, but being also able to to pin a really nice poem to get the ladies or whatever, right? I mean, you actually think about Beowulf. What a wonderful time period. In ba- like, you, you read Beowulf, what would happen is you have the, like these Anglo-Saxons would go and pillage and fight or do whatever, and then they would drink highly alcoholic mead and have bards sing poem tales about what happened. That's what the, the book Beowulf is essentially this really awesome long poem brag that you would be singing to your Anglo-Saxon homies over some really nice mead drink. People did this throughout time. You, like In Asia, all, all these different cultures, everywhere there's either uh, written or oral poetry, warriors did it. But we've sort of put it on the bat- backlog and act like it has nothing to do uh, with that at all. The reason that I think this is funny is music is the same way. Music, its birth in almost any culture is two areas, religion and war. Religion and war. Mm-hmm. Non-metrical uh, music almost always is like religious, right? So you have modal yep. chant and things like this. Anything with a beat is usually war. And so this, you know, so the idea of music and in and, and the broader sense, like poetry falls under music because music is the things that muses make. That's where we get the idea of music. So music, poetry, is not something about just merely eliciting mere feelings or emotions, but the idea of being well-formed. Uh, th- th- to be able to say a poem together or even sing songs together. You guys realize that like on the radio, the type of songs we have, it's hard to sing them together. Because they, they, they like jump around and you have to go in falsetto and you have to say words that don't exist and things like this. Uh, right, and if you actually if you re- read the lyrics apart from the, that's the, right. the quote-unquote music, it's pretty, uh, pretty bass most of the time. Well, <laughs> they don't even do bass well. Like, <laughs> I, I, was think, I was thinking of Irish drinking songs, yeah, right? right. Yeah. Like everybody can sing, no, nay, never, no, nay, never, no right more. Now. Will I play the Wild Rover? You know, that's a great song that everybody can sing drinking together. We are not drinking, unfortunately, right no, now. No, it's, 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 it's it is in the morning. morning. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> look, we, now, do you have any um, any poetry you'd recommend for men that's, you know, not going to turn men off to, to poetry? Any? Um, yes, and it's a war one, but a Bible one, too. Okay, it's good. It's The Destruction of Sennacherib by Lord Byron. Sennacherib is hard to spell, so if you just put Lord Byron, the destruction of, it comes up. Okay. But you can hear it. I mean, so this is about um, the biblical story of how the great army of Sennacherib was destroyed by the, the angel of death of the Lord. Mm. But what I want people to hear, because poetry is not just about, like, turning the nice phrase. It's about the rhythm, and you kind of, like, you want to march to this. 
The Assyrian came down like the wolf on the fold, and his cohorts were gleaming in purple and gold, and the sheen of their spears was like stars on the sea when the blue waves roll nightly on deep Galilee. Like the leaves of the forest when summer is green, the hosts with their banners at sunset were seen. Like the leaves of the forest when autumn hath blown, the host on the morrow lay withered and strown. For the angel of death spread his wings on the blast and breathed in the face of the foe as they passed. And the eyes of the sleepers waxed deadly and chill, and their heart but once heaved and forever grew still. And there lay the steed with his nostril all wide, but through it there rolled not the breath of his pride. And the foam of his gasping lay white on the turf and cold as the spray of the rock beating surf. And there lay the rider distorted and pale with the dew on his brow and the rust on his mail. And the tents were all silent, the banners alone, the lances unlifted, the trumpet unblown. And the widows of Ashur are loud in their wail and the idols are broke in the temple of Baal. And the might of the Gentile unsmote by the sword hath melted like snow in the glance of the Lord. Awesome. If you're just turning in, <laughs> tuning in... And you're not sure what's going on. Uh, we, <laughs> the Bible. We, we, we have uh, Bo Bonner. <laughs> we have Bo Bonner here on, on Man Up. And we're talking about uh, the importance of reading like a man. And uh, you're listening to Iowa Catholic Radio. That was awesome. Yeah, that was awesome. That was awesome. So thank you for doing that. First thank you, off, Lord thank Byron. You, thank you yeah. for, for reading that Lord on Byron. the air. Okay. Father Zach makes a good point. If you came in the middle of that, you might have been a little bit confused. Um, so talking about reading like a man, you've covered a lot of ground. And uh, first off, again, thanks for coming. The helping men get into reading, right? I, I don't want to tell them, here, pick up the Inferno and go nuts because they're going to quit pretty quickly, That's right? right? So it's like giving them a Bible and tell them to turn to Leviticus and start reading. Right. It's just not going to work. Unless you're into punishment. Unless you love <laughs> Unless you rules like and yeah. punishment. Yeah. So give us uh, a couple books to start with, uh, just, just to get us, maybe Church Fathers, something to get us started. Well, to, before you even start reading, I, somehow peop, men have to get to be able to tell stories together and to be able to do it well. Uh, you know, so much of what we do is either like small talk, like how's the weather, mm -hmm. what happened with the game, and I, mean, I like sports and everything like this, yeah. too. But, you know, we've lost the ability to, like, actually tell stories about our own lives. It's, it's hard to even imagine men getting together to do something like this at all. And even something like singing, like learn Irish drinking songs and sing them together. Because this idea of, like, doing it together as men is important. I would literally say start off with something like Aesop's Fables. I think you have to start really yeah. basic. Yeah. Aesop's fag Fables... Uh, it's sort of a beginning point before you can even start getting to anything like Don Quixote or Homer or anything like this. Um, so Aesop's Fables or something like crazy, like Oedipus Rex, like uh, anything by Sophocles, anything with a lot of death and gore because you'll remember it. Uh, but in the Bible, um, pray a psalm together before you do something. Um, if you're talking about um, early church fathers, I think the Confessions is a pretty yep. good way to start. Find a out. good translation of it too. That's yeah, right. Yeah. Uh, uh, what's it? Sheen does one. Not yeah. not yeah. So yeah. anyway, not Fulton Sheen. Yeah. The other one. Well, both. Thank you for taking time to talk with us today. Again, this is a, I I think a very important conversation to have. And one of the things I think about is the printing press was one of the greatest inventions of of all time and changed the course of human history to allow people access to information information that could help them grow intellectually and change today we watch the kardashians instead so turn off your tv and pick up a book up next we're going to have your 99 second homily with father zach so stick around and we will be right back Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to Man Up on Iowa Catholic Radio. We just had a great conversation with Bo Bonner on reading like a man. Lifelong learning is something that we are all called to do, and reading is, quite frankly, just the best way to accomplish this. Normally, we'd have a 99-second homily. I think we're going to cut it a little bit short because of yeah, the we, length of conversation, but it was worth it. Right? It was worth yeah, it. Time definitely. for your 99-second homily. <laughs> It'll be more like nine seconds. Uh, we want to talk today about the importance of words and the words that we speak as things that come from the disposition of our heart. And so today, as you're, you're going about your day, pay attention to those words you're, you're using. You know, there's the old phrase that sticks and stones may break my bones, but words never hurt me. But that's not true. The Lord looks at our hearts, hears our words, and especially our words to those closest to us, to our family. And we know that if we don't use our words properly, that 
our families are the ones that we can wound the deepest. You know, those that are closest to us. So uh, just invite you, encourage you today to use your words uh, well today. Use them to build up uh, rather than to tear down. All right, and St. James talks about the importance of the tongue, how it can be used for praise, but it can also be used for destruction. And so constantly being mindful of the words we're using uh, in whatever the circumstances are uh, is very, very important. And obviously St. James hits on it over and over and over again. Father, would you please end us in a word of prayer? In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Good and gracious God, we thank you for many blessings of this day, the blessings of our life, the blessing of living as Christians. We ask you to send your Holy Spirit upon us that we may honor you in word and deed. And we ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Thank you again for joining us today on Man Up on IO Catholic Radio. For Father Zach Kautsky, I am Joe Stopulus. It's time to man up and read like a man. Just say